<laughs> All right, so welcome back to the tutorial. Um, last episode, we actually created a camera, a smooth camera movement just like this. In this one, we're actually going to start tackling the shop so we have something to buy. Um, maybe not do the buying mechanic just yet, but at least we're going to display stuff in this little panel here. So let's go ahead and create ourselves some uh, content to actually sell. Now, what I'd like to do is I would like to have a um, I would like to be able to sell to sell player skins. So since we're only going to have a ball rolling around, it's not going to be a lot of work to just create some texture for that that ball, pretty much. So we can just create many of those and put them in the shop. So what I'd like to do actually is have a, a four by four grid, or maybe just a, a scrolling um, a, a scrolling mechanic like we get here. Um, pretty much just have, say, 16 skins for sales inside our shop. So what I'll do is I'll put every single of these skins inside a single texture so, so it is as optimal as possible. To do that, we are going to go ahead and create ourselves some art. So uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be using Photoshop. You can use Paint even though I don't really recommend it. Uh, because we we're going to, uh, you're going to need to be really specific where exactly you cut your texture. Uh, with Photoshop, it's going to be easy. I know that uh, you can do it with GIMP as well. That's a free software you could use. And uh, yeah, so I go ahead and start by creating a 1024 by 1024 pixels texture, and let's just name this something like player, uh, player textures. So player textures. And now basically what needs to happen is we we need to um, create a little 256 by 256 grid. So if I go over here and I start just dragging my mouse using the selection tool, I can see my pixels on the bottom right here. Uh, and I gotta stop at 256, 256. But before that, if you do not have these uh, as pixels, you can go up here in edit preference, units and rulers, and change these two up here to pixels. Okay, so once that is done, we can go ahead and just uh, cut a 256 by 256 square. So just like this, and then we fill it with the bucket tool, any color you want. Um, okay, so I think my Photoshop is set on black and white right now, so I gotta go change that. How exactly do I change that? mode. Okay, so I'll be putting it on RGB color. Alright, so um, this is going to be one texture. This is going to be one skin for the uh, the sphere. And every 256 pixel is going to be another one. So right now what I'm doing is I'll, I'll start by renaming this one to I call it say something like zero texture. So that's going to be the texture at the index zero. Now I'll duplicate that by hitting Ctrl J and then Ctrl T to move it around. So this is a free transform tool. Again, I will hold Shift and just move it over here and it should snap uh, when it reaches the 256 pixels. Now again, I'll be using my bucket tool and just put another color in there. Any color you want right now, it doesn't really matter. And I'll just go ahead and rename this to one underscore texture and now I will duplicate these two at the same time. So select these two using control. And then I hit control J again, control T, move them here. So that is going to be texture number three, or I mean two. And the next one is going to be texture at the index three. Now you can go ahead and give them different color if you wish, say purple or yellow doesn't really matter we're not <laughs> this is not the final art we're going to be using uh, and now what I like to do is I'll actually create a group not a group but a folder in Photoshop and I'll just drag these in here so this is going to be my uh, first row okay I'll duplicate that and just drag another one for now and let's go ahead and change the the name of these as well so this is the second row now the gray texture is now index number four. Maybe give it another color as well. 
This is index number five. Nope, small mistake here. Index number six. And finally, index number seven. Once you get your eight colors or 16 colors, whatever you want, just go ahead and save your PNG inside of your folder, your asset folder. So mine is somewhere in uh, over here. So assets, and I'll be putting it inside of resources. So resources, I'll go ahead and create a new folder in there called player. And this is going to be the player texture uh, dot PNG. So I'm saving this as a PNG. Okay. Also make sure you save the PSD if you're using the Photoshop file because you'll want to come back on this file and actually just do your modifications. All right, so now we have a texture inside of our Unity project. It's over here, but it's a whole texture and we actually want to use it as 16 different textures. So how exactly are we going to do this? We are going to transform this into a sprite. So. To do that, we are going to select it and we're going to go here in texture type, make this a sprite for 2D and UI. And in the sprite mode, you're actually going to choose multiple. And under multiple, well, not under multiple, but now that you chose that, you're going to open up the sprite editor. Hit apply. And now this window will pop up. Um, this will allow you to just trim your uh, texture. So you could do uh, every single trim manually if you wish, but we're going to be doing it uh, using tools instead. So uh, the way we're going to do that is we're going to go in slice up here, then choose the type grid by cell size. And we know that every single grid is 256 by 256. So I'll go ahead and put 256 by 256 here and then hit slice. Now it just created eight different texture for our eight different colors. It uh, automatically detected that there was no texture down here, so uh, we didn't make any, any more sprites for that. Okay, now that this is complete, now that you have your eight cuts, you are going to go ahead and hit apply. And if you take a look under your texture, now you can see that um, it has children's and these children's are basically your new textures. Okay. Well, that's one good thing done. Now we need to go ahead and put that inside of uh, buttons, just the same exact way we did for the level selection. So let's go ahead and create ourselves a container for that shop. I am going to go ahead and create another panel for now. So panel, right, uh, right now I'm under uh, shop. So right click on shop, create yourself a new panel. And this is going to be, if we base ourselves on the other one, this is going to be 75 in height, so stretch over here on the horizontal axis. I'll be putting that on zero, zero, and the height is going to be 75. Also, I think we modified the height of this container here, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's at 150, so I'll be doing the same thing over here. On the shop, I'll change the height for 150. We're also going to need a horizontal layout group inside of that container and also a scroll rect. So let's start by renaming that container. So the panel you get here, let's call it um, shop item container. And we're going to add a horizontal layout group. And let's also add a, um, what's the name already? Scroll rect, okay, so scroll rect. Okay, so, um, now we need to go ahead and start putting some stuff in there. So I'll just create a button for now. So under that UI button, and I'll just move it around right now. So it snaps back inside of the horizontal layout group. And okay, now what we need to do is uh, like we did on this side, we need to tell the horizontal layout group to not force expand our button. So under horizontal layout group, I'm going to uncheck the force child expand on the width and also on the height. Now that this is done, we are going to go ahead and take our button, add a layout element to it. And on the layout element, we are going to change the minimum width for um, 
what's the what's the height of the container it is 75 so I'll just go ahead and put 75 by 75 now remember this is not a 16 by 5 ratio because the texture are actually square texture so as long as these two number match uh, we should be good to go okay so that gives us the prefab for our shop basically so uh, I'm going to remove the text component in here and we are going to save this so go ahead and drag and drop this new button right inside of your prefab folder now we can go ahead and rename this to shop button prefab and uh, basically we're going to have to do the exact same thing we did with this side so for every single uh, sprite inside of that well I guess parent sprite we're going to create a button for that and a little bit later on we will also bind it to a certain function okay so let's go ahead and do that right now actually so inside of our main menu script let's go ahead and open up the main menu we're going to add two new game object up here which are basically going to be the same exact thing so public game object shop button prefab and public game object shop uh, item container or shop button container if you wish does not really matter as long as you understand what's going on so um, now that we have this we actually need to fill this up so to do that uh, we're gonna go down here right below where we actually get every single sprite for um, our thumbnails we're gonna do the exact same thing so we're gonna declare ourselves a array of sprite that we're gonna call say maybe uh, textures these are our player textures is equal to resources dot load all and we're gonna load all resources of type sprite in the folder that we've called player now let's take a look folder over here is resources and inside of that is the player folder okay now below that we're gonna do a simple for each so for each sprite uh, texture in texture with an S we are going to say we're going to create another game object so I'm just going to duplicate this code take it here then copy paste so game object container instantiate we're actually gonna instantiate the uh, shop button prefab as a game object and then we're gonna say container that get component image dot sprite is equal to texture okay now container dot transform dot set parent is going to be instead of level button container is going to be the shop button container let's take a look at this now if just see if everything works fine we're going to hit play and we get a null reference exception that is because we haven't uh, set our public field over here so if you go back outside of your game so make sure that you uh, you uh, exit your game and then you choose your main menu you're gonna see that we haven't assigned the shop button prefab yet and also the shop button container so let's just go ahead and do that the shop button prefab is inside of the prefab folder and the shop button container is uh, under the shop so over here okay now let's try this again by pressing play and as you can see this pretty much created a bunch of buttons on uh, the shop and they look like this okay uh, we haven't assigned the scroll rack container just yet so let's go back inside of our uh, shop item container and under scroll rect we are going to assign the uh, content as himself so make sure you drag and drop the shop item container right inside of that field also disable the vertical scrolling while you're there again let's hit save then press play and now if we actually try to scroll through that we can and every single one of these are going to be shop items basically and we're going to be able to buy them and we're also going to save the state of uh, every single item so we're gonna know if they're bought or not okay let's exit the game and let's actually remove this shop button prefab because it's uh, it's being instantiated at the 
start time. So that's pretty much what we have right now. If we press on level selection, it goes on this side. If we press on shop, it goes on this side. Now let's go ahead and make sure that uh, when it's outside of the panel, it actually hides the content so we don't, we don't get this, uh, this kind of behavior when we're looking at the main menu. So to fix this behavior, all we have to do is go inside of our shop, um, our actual container for the whole UI, so for this whole panel, we're actually going to go on this, then add the mask component. So go ahead and do add component, mask. And this way, everything outside of this panel is going to be uh, hidden. Now let's go ahead and do the same exact thing for the level selection. So on this side, add a, a, a mask component as well. Now if we hit play on this, we don't actually see the overflow anymore. So if we go back to the shop, we can actually scroll and it's going to be all the new items. Okay, same thing on this side for the level selection. So if we exit the actual panel range, then it's not going to do anything. It's still going to hide the content. Okay. Well guys, that's pretty much it for this episode. If you have any question or comment, please leave them in the comment section below. Also, if you enjoyed this or if it was helpful to you, please leave it a like. I really appreciate that. And also subscribe for more tutorials. So guys, thanks again for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next episode.